Hello, my name is Carolyn Hill Brown. I'm a speech language pathologist at the House Ear Institute on the Children's Cochlear Implant Program. I would like to at this time present a case study on a child in our program named Rory. Is it pretend? A month after Rory turned three, he got sick, what we thought was the flu. We took him to the hospital, found out it was spinal meningitis. Uh, we weren't really told what could happen other than he might not live and we didn't know for five days. When he finally recovered he was still very sick and he, he was talking out of context and um, the doctors told us that it was just basically um, like a short circuit and that when the swelling went down and everything that he would be fine. Well after five weeks we had him tested before he left the hospital and found out that he had uh, what they considered then a severe hearing loss. We never got much response with hearing aids, and we found out that he had an extreme amount of calcification in both ears, ossification, I guess it is, bony growth in both ears. And we went ahead after about six months, uh, finally made the decision to go ahead and have the implant. During the pre-implant evaluation, it was noted that Roy was still trying to communicate verbally. However, most of his attempts were unintelligible. This audiogram shows Rory's hearing thresholds in the implanted ear prior to surgery. Aided responses were limited to 250 hertz. Leave it. Leave it on. <laughs> Basic guidance involves approximately 20 hours of work with the child and his parents. During this time, the child is fitted with the external portion of the device, appropriate unit settings are obtained, and the child is introduced to sound through electrical stimulation. If you can hear it. Rory is shown here during his first experience with the cochlear implant. Not all children exhibit obvious responses during basic guidance but begin to respond sometime during the first six months. As soon as we had him stimulated with the implant, the bedwetting cut down to like once a week. So that's like, you know, from four times a night, seven days a week to once a week was amazing. Um, he had also started picking his arms and doing a lot of little nervous things that just seemed to go away as soon as he stimulated, including gritting his teeth to the point that you couldn't hardly stand and be around him. And all those things just slowly went away within the first month of being stimulated. This audiogram shows Rory's hearing thresholds in the left ear with the cochlear implant. As you can see, these fall within the speech range. In his unimplanted ear, Rory's aided responses are limited to 250 and 500 hertz. Watch, Rory. In this segment, Rory's prompted productions are slightly more intelligible, even though they are marked with hypernasality and rhythm is not yet appropriate. I think from six months to this day, every day, there's some progress. It seems like he is more attuned to sound. He. Um, is more attentive, he has a longer attention span, um, he, he is more a part of the family, more a part of his environment. Okay, what is in the yellow block? That was perfect. Here at the two-year follow-up, Rory's prompted speech is much more intelligible. Although he is still prolonging vowels and language structures are not yet complete, he is able to improve his productions when given a model. What is blue block? What is in the... That was perfect. I think it's a block. He's enthusiastic about learning and he is auditorily aware enough that if there's a sound that he's not familiar with in the background, he'll turn quickly and ask what that is. Um, environmentally, he is, is a thousand times safer than he would have been before he had the implant. That is a baby. That is a 
a boy. Let me ask you Okay, that is a brother then, if that's the way you want to do it. Rory's articulation skills are still improving, and blends are beginning to emerge. The non-segmental aspects, such as rate and rhythm, are also improving. However, stress patterns are not yet consistent. That is another brother. That is another brother. That is another brother. Good boy. Um, in school, he is, is uh, in a program, it's an oral program. Uh, most of the children in his class have a great deal more hearing than he does, and yet he's able to do everything that they are. He's on grade level on most subjects, some things having to do with language. Of course, he's not quite up to where he should be, but he's beginning to read. He's trying to sound out words. He can identify rhyming words. Yeah. Um, Here you can see that Rory's speech and language skills are enabling him to communicate more effectively, and he appears comfortable in conversational situations. How fun! That's, wow, that sounds like a good time. How old is your friend? What? How old is your friend? Huh? That would be really fun. That sounds, is he going to have a lot of different friends there? No, should be pretty that that. That will be neat. That's super Are you excited? Yeah. He knows. He knows that you're a purple belt, and he knows not to tell anybody. Yeah, if I get a phone I'll call from another parent saying they're considering the implant for their child, I'll ask Roy, what do you think? This other child wants an implant. He'll go, oh, yeah, yeah. He needs an implant. It'll help. He'll like it. And that's all he's not going to do anymore. Okay. We have continued to see steady progress in Rory's speech as well as receptive and expressive language skills. It is hoped if this rate of progress continues, Rory will become more intelligible and more competent in his interactions with the hearing world. It's funny when I think about it now because we used to pray that Rory would talk. And there are many times now when we pray that he'd just shut up. <laughs>